Rumors about the next generation 2018 iPhone kicked off even before Apple announced the now current generation 2017 iPhone. Because of course they did. Now, presumably just weeks away from Apple's annual September iPhone event, the rumors are coming in faster and more furiously than ever. Some of them are all but certain, others <laughs> likely more fiction than fact. I'm Rene Ritchie, welcome back to Vector. <laughs> Let's sort this all out. Way back in July of 2017, Nikkei reported that Apple was planning to go all in on OLED in 2018. Apple is planning to use advanced organic light emitting diode displays in all the new iPhone models launched from the second half of 2018. That's according to two industry sources. One said that Apple is tentatively looking at releasing three new models next year. Now, again, this was way back before Apple had shipped a single OLED iPhone, namely iPhone 10. So Nikkei can be forgiven given if that part doesn't pan out. Of course, Apple went on to release three new iPhone models in 2017, iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone 10. So it wasn't exactly a stretch. Back then, it was two iterative models for those who loved what iPhone was, including and especially the home button, but just wanted it faster and with a better camera. The revolutionary model though, that was for people who wanted what iPhone would be next. In 2018, the new model count remains the same, even if the intent behind it has changed significantly. On November 13, 2017, just after iPhone 10 shipped, everyone's favorite supply chain exfiltrator, Kuo Mingchi, chimed in. Two new OLED models target high-end market. New TFT LCD model aims at low-end and mid-range market. In other words, there were gonna be three new iPhones, two with OLED, one with LCD. Quo pegged the flagship sizes as 5.8 inches, the same as the current iPhone 10, and 6.5 inches for the iPhone plus sized model, which would keep the overall footprint about the same size as the current iPhone 8 plus, and a 6.1 inch for the LCD model, which would keep the plus distinctly plusy, but also appeal to regions where phones are primary computers and size really does matter. This rumor is notable for a few reasons. First, the two OLED flagships and a less expensive LCD model, and at those specific sizes, have stayed consistent to this very day. Second, never mind the imbecilic hot takes from Forbes Contributor Network and the like that Apple was canceling the iPhone X. This hinted at a replay of the iPhone 5C strategy from 2013. Business has become so large that this year we're going to replace the iPhone 5. And we're gonna replace it with not one, but two new designs. This allows us to serve even more customers. Rather than keeping around the previous expensive to manufacture iPhone and dropping its price by $100 to make it the mid-range, Apple would be creating an all new mid-range device. Then it was the unabashedly plastic pop-colored iPhone 5C. Now it was rumored to be an LCD iPhone with the new design. Third, since Samsung was the only one capable of producing OLED panels to Apple's requirements back then, at least at scale, Samsung could charge a huge, huge premium for those components. Going LCD would let Apple offer something that still looked new, but cost much less. To get the chinless iPhone X look, something almost no Android vendor has been willing or able to do, even a year since introduction, Apple folded the display back onto itself. That was possible with OLED then, and it appears to be possible with LCD now, if you have Apple's money and will. In 2013, plastic versus metal was the key differentiator. In 2018, it looks to be LCD and aluminum versus OLED and steel. Not just any LCD either. On May 9, 2018, Business Korea said, Apple is expected to load its next 6.1 inch iPhone model with an MLCD Plus display, which LG used in the G7 ThinQ smartphone. The MLCD Plus display realizes a bright screen with less power consumption than the IPS LCD display. That's 100% of the DCI P3 color space at 30% less power consumption, so still a significant upgrade. On November 17, 2017, Quo talked modems and the possibility for dual SIM cards. 
New baseband chips from Intel and Qualcomm will significantly boost transmission speed of the second half 2018 iPhone models thanks to supporting 4x4 MIMO antenna design. That's 4x4 multi-in, multi-out, which would be up from 2x2 found in current iPhones. Due to ongoing patent disputes and massive pricing demands though, Apple would stick to primarily using Intel modems, only using Qualcomm where they have to for legacy CDMA compatibility. Verizon and Sprint literally still holding the wireless world back, going on years. Apple is already conservative when it comes to radios. It didn't go 3G until the iPhone 3G, and it didn't go LTE until iPhone 5. It prefers to wait for later generation, more power efficient modems, than rush to get the latest, hottest speeds in there first. That's a huge contrast to how Apple views local performance with industry leading processors year after year. And yeah, it absolutely irks LTE and now 5G nerds, but given how much performance can vary based on position and tower alone, it's not something Apple feels most customers really care about, at least not at the micro scale. Dual SIM is different. That will hold wide, wide appeal for people in parts of the world where the need to switch between carriers can be a daily reality. Quo got even more specific about the dual slots on April 24, 2018, specifying that they would only be available in the 6.8 inch iPhone 10 plus and the 6.1 inch iPhone LCD minus, likely for size reasons, but also pricing on the latter. If the dual SIM model sells for $650 to $700 US, the single SIM model may sell for $550 to $650 US. That's a big deal. On December 8, 2017, Quo was back, back again, but this time with battery rumors. If Apple and LGC work out manufacturing hurdles in time for mass production, the next generation 5.8 inch OLED iPhone will be powered by a 2900 to 3000 milliamp hour battery, Quo says. A larger 6.5 inch OLED model is anticipated to employ a two cell design with a capacity between 3300 and 3400 milliamp hours. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Measuring battery life on an iPhone based on checking email and surfing news sites on the web was fine in 2008 when that's legitimately what most people did. It's not fine in 2018 when more and more people are out catching Pokemon and surfing Instagram. Then it was just the radio and the renderer firing up. Now it's constant GPS, shaders, and mixed media as well. Since making iPhones heavier is terrible for usability and there's not much new chemistry to make batteries better, Apple has to continue making them more and more clever. A lot of that is in the software and the controllers, but geometry helps too. For MacBook, Apple went with terraces to squeeze in as many square millimeters of battery as it could. If a two cell L configuration could help the new OLED flagships up their power game and further differentiate them from the LCD, so much the better. On May 28, 2018, Weibo, which is essentially the Chinese Twitter, leaked an 18 watt USB-C charging brick for the next generation iPhones. Yes, low and slow charging over the traditional if miserly iPhone brick might be the best way to micromanage and prolong every minute of battery health possible from your iPhone. But people use their iPhones so often and Apple has gotten so good at mitigating the issues with faster, hotter charging that finally including a bigger brick in the box makes all the kind of sense that does. As for USB-C replacing lightning on the phone itself, that's probably never going to happen. Apple made lightning because they needed it for iPhone 5 and USB-C was taking far too long to come to market. Years too long, literally. And when it finally did arrive, it was thicker than lightning, which is why other vendors have had to cram it under the display rather than letting it fall aligned across the middle. And the cables themselves were a mess, which is why a Google engineer had to embark on a ridiculous quest to review all of them personally on Amazon. The timing and technology was just wrong. And by the point that it was fixed, Apple already had millions of lightning accessories on the market. And no one, not Apple, and certainly not mainstream customers, wanted to see a repeat of the frustration and expense of the dock transition rage all just a few years previously. Well, except for the handful of cross-platform tech nerds making all the noise about it. So it's far more likely that when next Apple transitions, it won't be to USB-C at all, but it will be to full-on wireless. Apple TV just lost its cable port. Other vendors have shipped or prototyped phones with no buttons or ports at all. It's the future, frustrating as it may sound now. 
On May 23, 2018, Bloomberg reported that Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation had spun up A12 production. The processor will use a 7 nanometer design that can be smaller, faster, and more efficient than the 10 nanometer chips in current Apple devices like iPhone 8 and iPhone 10, the people said. They asked not to be identified discussing private plans. Why are they discussing it? Apple will be making architectural changes as well, but just today, Macworld pegged the process changes alone as significant. The company paints a very rosy picture compared to the 10 nanometer process that the A11 Bionic was made with. The company says seven nanometers offers a 1.6 times logic density, around 20% speed improvement, and around 40% power reduction. In other words, if Apple were to produce the exact same A11 Bionic chip with the seven nanometer process, it would be roughly 40% smaller and use either 40% less power running at the same speed or run at a 20% higher clock speed at the same power. You can be assured those are best case figures. Although processes are marketing driven now and not directly comparable, Apple's A series has gone to 10 nanometer and is going to seven nanometer while Intel is still struggling to get x86 down to its own 10 nanometer process. At the same time, Apple introduced efficiency and performance fusion cores in 2016, an artificial intelligence block in 2017, and will be pushing the silicon industry again in 2018. On July 5th, 2018, Quo returned with colorful new rumors. <laughs> Sorry. We expect the demand for the new 6.5 inch OLED iPhone will be better than the iPhone 10 because of similar or lower price, but with larger display, dual SIM, dual standby, and three possible casing colors, black, white, and gold. The new 6.1 inch LCD iPhone is expected to boost better replacement demands than iPhone 8 and 8S did due to being equipped with full screen, face ID, selling price lower than 700 US dollars, DSDS, and five possible casing colors, gray, white, blue, red, and orange. Steve Hammerstoffer on Twitter added, I can say at current prototyping stage, white, black, likely space gray, gray, lighter gray, red, blue, yellow, orange, and pink are still on the table. iPhone 10 was prototyped in gold, but never shipped that way, perhaps due to the complexity of vapor processing stainless steel. iPhone 5C shipped in an Apple chromatic range of colors. So it's possible Apple has both stabilized gold on stainless steel for the OLED flagship models and will replicate a color range on the glass and aluminum LCD version. It's always felt like iPhone was a once a year blockbuster movie and Apple was never able to replicate the more year round TV like success of iPod iPhone 5C was an attempt to do just that, but it didn't catch on. Whether price and color could let the 6.1 inch LCD do that, we'll have to wait and see. And yeah, no product red for the fall. Apple still uses that and hopefully one day other colors like purple and blue to reignite interest in the spring. On August 17, 2018, Trendforce teased Apple Pencil for iPhone. Similarly, the company plans to introduce three new iPhone models later this year, says Trendforce. All three models would continue to feature Face ID, and two of them would be premium versions with an AMOLED screen. Apple Pencil would be offered as an option as well. On August 16, Economic Daily repeated the same rumor. Apple's two large screen OLED iPhones are expected to support the Apple Pencil stylus this year so as to increase consumer fun and convenience and sprint new machine sales. Now, I'd love Apple Pencil on iPhone. I'd love it. Digital Field Notes is basically my dream. It might also hint at a variable refresh rate ProMotion display coming to iPhone as well. Apple has almost certainly had this in the lab for years now, but whether we'll see it this fall or not, we'll also have to wait and see. Noticeably absent from all the rumors is a return of Touch ID. One day we might have passive ambient security where a bevy of sensors captures snippets of face, touch, voice, gait, and other biometrics and determines a threshold of trust, only challenging us for authentication when it falls below that threshold. Today though, we have Face ID. But let's talk about the camera. It is one of the most important features of any new iPhone. One of the few things that actually drives upgrades. With iOS 12, we're getting an AR mode in iMessage and FaceTime, but not camera, at least not yet. Why not? My guess is because Apple hasn't shown off the new camera yet. When we see it and it works more like the front facing true depth sensor than the current dual lens system, we'll also see a full on AR camera to go with it. I'm also holding out hope for portrait mode video. <laughs> I'm a perpetual optimist. So when will Apple announce a new iPhone? Since the iPhone 5, Apple has announced every flagship iPhone during a special event held the first or second Tuesday or Wednesday of September. 
Since September 11, which is a Tuesday this year, is also closely akin to a Memorial Day, Wednesday, September 12 seems like the most likely date, though Apple could do September 11th one year, including this year. Likewise, since iPhone 5, Apple has shipped almost every flagship iPhone the second Friday following the event, with the exception of the iPhone 6S in 2015, which shipped the third Friday following the event, and iPhone 10, which shipped on November 3. So September 21st or 28th could be the date this year. Past patterns are the best indicator of future events, but they aren't perfect. Apple can and will throw curveballs whenever the company's logistics or strategy demands. So be aware of the dates, but don't be bound to them. I still think they're pretty good guesses though. What will the next iPhone be called? Ah, up until this year, Apple's naming pattern had been consistent. iPhone number followed by iPhone number plus S. But 2017 changed everything. Instead of iPhone 7S, we got iPhone 8 and iPhone 10, literally rendered as a Roman numeral, as an X. So what follows iPhone 8 and iPhone 10? Will it be iPhone 9 and iPhone X2? Just iPhone 9? Just iPhone X2? Something else entirely? Apple can name the next iPhone anything it wants. iPhone Edition, iPhone Pro, iPhone Mother of Dragons. It's purely a marketing decision. Apple picks a name, puts it at the top of the list, picks every other name possible, often goes back to the first one, or picks an alternative. It's entirely up to Apple, but it could be up to you as well. Are you inspired to learn about computer science, about code, but have no idea where to start? Having not studied coding at all in your life and hearing terms like artificial intelligence and neural networks can be daunting at first, but don't worry about it. A good place to start learning the logic and theory behind all of this is brilliant. They have a bunch of courses teaching you the fundamentals of computer science for those of you who are new to the field. Each course is interactive and breaks up complicated concepts into bite-sized chunks to make sure you actually absorb the information, a strategy which I wish was used when I was in college. Just go to brilliant.org slash vector and give it a shot. Who knows? Maybe you could be the next one on Johnny Saruji's team. <laughs> Thank you, Brilliant. So that's the current timeline and my current thoughts about what we can expect come September. But now I wanna hear from you. What are the features that would make you rush out and either upgrade or cross-grade to a new iPhone? What are the things you absolutely wanna see from Apple and what don't you wanna see at all? Please hit like, please hit subscribe, and then let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.